Good morning. It's uh, Thursday, September the 26th, and it's about 1 a.m. in the morning. I haven't recorded a uh, Vicar video in a long time. Um, and just for those of you who know me, this is my... Well, those of you who don't know me... No, no. For those of you who know me, this is my Canadian accent. Okay, there you go. For people who didn't understand that, whatever. You know, you'll figure it out. Um, so... Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, in other words, peace. Um, and then uh, the Croatians say bogue, and I've uh, learned since then that even the Russians say bogue. So, uh, so bogue. You know, it's like, um, so anyway, so it's, uh, it's a kind of an update video of sorts. Um, you know, fall has begun, and uh, a lot has changed, and uh, I've had... Um, Alhamdulillah, I've had like a really good experience so far with uh, the Quran and just lo lots of lots of things, lots of updates. So inshallah, we can just talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm in like a little bit of uh, Sunni Islam mode, um, but it's a little bit more complicated. It's way more complicated. And that's what I just want to just highlight and speak to what its audience is. So I'm, I'm identifying at the moment with a community that refers to itself as a Quran alone community. And um, so, the, so and, and my audience, I guess, is probably a Western audience and just, you know, English speaking and Westernish education, you know, and, and you're like socioeconomically in a state where you've got access to the internet, you've had an education, that sort of thing, right? So like that's, that's who I'm speaking to, of course, and really whoever can comprehend what I'm saying. And then, uh, and so that's it, so that's the audience. That's, you know, and uh, I'm a very open person, so if you have any questions, just ask a question and I'll try and respond. And I'm human, so I'll try and respond. Um, so, so, okay. So, 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 so I'm, I'm identified with this community called um, Quran Alone, but they're, um, uh, and they come from various walks in life. Like some, you, you find all, you know, all, all sorts of people that end up into this zone. Um, but I had like a Sunni background. So my Sunni Islam background is not really, um, it's it's very kind of bizarre because it's you know it's 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 very like you know everybody has a unique story and so mine's one of those unique Sunni Islam sort of people you know family and so on but I had the great fortune of also having a mom who came from basically a a, a Brahmin family like a Hindu family so I got to experience both and that's how. You know, like it's not that's how like so my experience is a little well I guess it's pretty I don't know pretty unique that as far as I can tell so my dad is a Sunni Muslim my mom was a Brahmin Hindu they got married and, you know and like lots of other things obviously and here I am in my journey and I started practicing Sunni Islam only really in my 20s like 20 something in that time because I was in university and I got into like, got into Sunni Islam. Let's just say to me, so just keep things short. Got into Sunni Islam then. <laughs> Interesting years. And then I also met this very, like, you know, deep in the Sunni culture, um, this guy who was really quite an expert in the Hadith, to my knowledge. Like, you know, he had like, advanced knowledge of Hadith. And um, Alhamdulillah, it was very good. Very good. And I identified with him and like, you know, it was great fun. Um, We've since lost touch, but you know, it's alhamdulillah. So my life took turns, you know, all sorts of different turns. And then I ended up, uh, basically my daughter is half Croatian. Let's just say that, half Yugoslav. That's the technically correct thing. Um, so she's, she's, she's Indian and Yugoslav and uh, the joke inside my house, uh, and the and a certain audience will get it. Like the uh, so 
the joke inside the house is it's like the non-aligned movement. Now, for those of you who don't know what that reference means, it's new. It was new to me too. As like you know, I was not like you know, I knew about this. Basically, there was some military agreement between like Yugoslavia proper and India back in the forties or fifties or something. So it was kind of like non-aligned movement, not aligning with the West basically for something. And here we are in this situation where my daughter is the non-aligned movement. So that's the joke. Uh, anyway, so this is between India and Yugoslavia. So for those of you who want to Google it, Google it or something, because that, that and I'm only just going from the story at home. Um, so anyway, so I've ended up in this Quran alone community, and it's just fascinating. It's fascinating beyond belief. And uh, the most fun thing about the whole thing is just you get the exposure to this the, the, the swath of beliefs like you know so you've got flat earthers on one end and you've got like academics on the other and you've got people who are i guess black and kind of hip hoppy you've got um all sorts everything it's just every every culture you can imagine and any kind of like different belief system like, you know, I, I, I believe Earth is a globe. Like, I'm not too... At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. In, in the, in, it's not like that big a deal. It's, I, I, for me, I think it's a globe. As you look at the moon, it's, it's, it's a sphere. And there's the sun is a sphere, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the idea that the Earth is also a sphere is, doesn't seem just too completely nuts for me. But like, whatever. I, it's true. Like, if you look around, everything looks flat. Sure, because that's as far as you, my eye can go. And whatever, you know. Yeah. One of the flat earther guys was telling me like um, like something about like, you know, a water or whatever. Like you're supposed to have some like water and that's some proof. Like I haven't done, I've done zero research on this flat earth thing. So apparently there's like, you know, you put some water and then like how come the water is flat and you look at like the oceans or whatever. That's what he was trying to convince me about it. But like uh, theoretically I had studied like the pi, like, you know, the, the pi, the, the pi, whatever, whatever the number is, 3.1 or something. But apparently what it is, is that's a circle. Uh, you know, it's like you've got the circle and then you've got like the tangent on the top or something, like, you know? So you've got the circle and you've got the thing on the top. And so it's a ratio between that and that inside the circle, right? And so, you know, you, like you take the circle and you draw a line like that and then you've got, so it's that's that ratio. And, and this pi is supposed to be that perfect. I mean, not perfect, but it, it approaches that because the line, the line is only like a, my mom used to say is like the Euclidean line is this only length and no breadth, for instance. So it's a very specific understanding of what it is. So similarly for a circle, like it's almost like that form kind of circle. So it's a perfect circle. And the best that the geometry can do is like, it just gets you that kind of tangent or whatever, like because at the, circles have that kind of quality apparently. The, you know, as far as we, whenever we render a circle, at the end of the day, there are some straight lines. But like the perfect circle would be a perfect circle. I don't know. It's all complex math and whatever else. But the key thing is it's a ratio between the two things. So going back to the going back to the flat Earth thing, I I was thinking, huh, maybe it's the you know the ratio because we're on the tangent. Like we're so tiny, and you know, as far as our eye can see, and whatever. You know, and then like there's a bigger circle thing going on, and whatever. So that's as far as I went conceptually, and whatever. So flat Earth is great. Like if it's flat, it's great. If it's not flat, it's great. Like whatever. And so that's so you get folks in that that whole thing, and you get all sorts of stuff. You get like left leaning, right. Well, I don't know if you get right leaning. Well, yeah, you get. I guess I don't know. I guess you, you get the whole political spectrum in some colorful way and I'm using the framework of political spectrum of left and right but like since people don't care about that at all like you know there's just people, people of all types basically you know what I'm saying right so you get so you get the whole bunch and the only thing that unites them is the Quran and uh, probably their journey through the Hadith and Quran into the Quran like that. so that's how that community functions <sighs> This might have been very confusing for whoever was listening to this. 
but such is the state. Um, so what have I been watching lately? So let me just give you a quick snapshot of what that life's all about. Here, let's go with, uh, you know what, let's go with this, inshallah. I'll give you like, I'll give you like all these other things that are going on like in my work life. So I've got like, uh, let me just get rid of that. But like work life, you know, I have to figure out like cash flow and things like that. You're like, there's all interesting stuff. Like, you know, it's like gig economy. All, like, anyway. So there's this one stuff here. Let me just give you a taste of the YouTube history and you'll get like a real sense of what's happening. So, so this is what my YouTube algorithm gives me. It gives me mean tweets in a kind of like, you know, interesting. And then like, the, okay, so the speed is super interesting because I've been clicking on every, like all sorts of things, all sorts of things, okay? So, so check that. Best is to watch the history. So you check out the history and you get like a much better sense of what's going on. So this is my, this is my feed, right? Like this is the feed of like uh, uh, my filter bubble example, right? Like this is like a pretty personal thing. Okay, so what's happening here is um, I'm learning about Nassim Nicholas Taleb and he's just a fascinating scholar and uh, he's done work on, he's just, He's just a fascinating philosopher, basically. And it's for like, I guess people who've gone to university and whatever, and they get this stuff. And there's lots of the financial group and like this whole community that's like, you know, he's got a huge following on Twitter. And I was about to say Twitter, but like on Twitter and so on. Right, so that's that. Um, I went to a local mosque. So I literally went to a local mosque in my community. It's a Sunni mosque. And, um, I learned about this Jews 29 today, for example. So I learned about it September 2019, essentially. And actually the whole reason I'm, I'm, I'm up is I'm actually trying to like learn about that because one of the brothers at the mosque told me that um, he recited an ayat, like, like a, a verse, and um, he didn't know which chapter it was. And so there was another brother who knew the verse. He could recite the verse and he, he knew, I mean, he knew he had memorized it, but he didn't know the meaning of it. And so I was not able to get, so, and I, but somehow in the conversation, I was able to get the chapter. So he told me it was chapter 29 and he said, Jews 29. So I just, I don't even know what the Jews is. I know there are like some 30 sections of the Quran or something to that effect, but like, I don't, I haven't formally been trained on what Jews and all that stuff means. And all the apps that you're using, the Quran apps, they have all this, these assumptions built in. So it's like, you know, it's just, anyway. So I'm hoping it is chapter 29. And hopefully if I meet this guy again, I'll ask him. And, you know, ask the neighboring people there. And hopefully they'll be able to give me an exact citation of it. So anyway, that's how I ended up on this, uh, on this video here. So I'm just like trying to learn a little bit about that. Then I'm also coming across this, like this, uh, this community of like learners who are, no, like these, uh, uh, like Islamic entrepreneurs of sorts. So this is a fascinating community that you'll find. Uh, so this is one of them, and it's very good. It's, it's actually quite interesting, but it's a business. It's like it's a business. And then the, the, the conspiracy guy that I'm following, his name is Sam Garens. But he's not just any old conspiracy guy. Like he believes in flat earth, and he's got lots of strong opinions on like lots of things. Uh, you know, so a secular audience will freak out, most likely. Uh, but he's 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 good in the sense that he's um, he's he's translated the Quran start to finish, and he's a linguist and he's got like that kind of a background, and he, like you know, the, you you just like so from my perspective right now, uh, he's he's just a fascinating like individual, and his works are there for you to verify. So I have a copy of his translation of the Quran that I only got, like, I only started reading, like I said, I've only gotten introduced to this person, the Sam Garens person in 2019. So I've never known him before. So, um, but I've known of this Quran alone community from like 2006, 2007, something around there. So anyway, just, you know, that's just an interesting like side note. So, you know, and then, you know, just like the whole divorce situation and everything. So I'm like, you know, I'm just, just sampling what's out there. Of course, and just staying up to date on 
Trump and all this stuff. And I'm doing this through Jimmy Kimmel. And I'll, I'll give you some reasons why, inshallah, in the future, if you want. Like, for the moment, that's what it is. This is a consultant's consultant. This guy's name is um, Jonathan Stark. He's solid. Like, he gives solid consulting advice. A little bit is like, for me, it doesn't, it's not a hundred point on, it doesn't resonate, but like, uh, he's good. I mean, like, I just recommend him. Like, he's, you just go, because like, whatever he talks about is the most relevant in my world experience. Like, so it's, I just like, immediately, it just makes sense. Whatever he's saying, most of it, like most of it, like most of it. I'm a customer, like I bought stuff, right? So it's like, he's, he's good. Yeah. And I'm also learning about these, um, these, there's like this theological aspect to Sunni Islam that's like super fascinating. So that's happening through, through like various channels. Uh, what was this? This one is reconceptualizing where when, oh yeah, I was just like just uh, sampling and experimenting with videos. Uh, so that's it. So this is one of those, because I follow the Berkman Center every now and then. So this is the guy, Howard Marks, uh, from a talk uh, at Google. This is the guy that introduced me to Nassim Nicholas Talib. You know, I looked this character up on Twitter. He's just unreal. He's really cool. I mean, like, but I don't know much about his belief system, so I'm still not like a pro or, or against, but I'm pro him for one reason. He speaks um, uh, with, uh, like, he takes epistemology quite seriously, from what I can tell, from my brief, like, um, in, like, you know, just my brief touch on this Nassim Taleb guy. Um, he's obviously, a, a rock star, obviously, like he's got a huge following, blah, 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 There's standard, standard celebrity kind of thing. But like, um, but from my just initial kind of like gauging of what's going on, he seems to speak the truth, basically. Like he's got like that, he just, just says what it is, whatever he's thinking on his mind. And, um, uh, and, and, he's, and he's brutally kind of like, he just does it. Uh, he doesn't mince, like, whatever. he just says whatever he has to say. And, um, you know, and, uh, so, so, so far, you know, I'm like, I like the fact that he sticks to the knowledge that's like demonstrable, like almost. And then, you know, and, and then he goes into like pretty st strategic, you know, stuff. You know, just as I'm rambling, you know, he's probably one of those two. So, or obviously, but he's much better, right? So, I'll do that. So, so anyway, so that's a guy, but like the reason I'm giving him like my ear is because this guy is a real gentleman in his talk. So this one is like a talk from, I don't know, you just, ask, just ask me if you want to know, but like, this is from uh, 2015. 2015, it's on, it's on an investing and, you know, something like that. Just you know, value investing. So, oh, God knows. I just, it's one of those things. So that's that. This one was a really kind of, sad and hilarious talk. I don't want, I don't mean to say anything against uh, this person. Sorry, my apologies. I just like, no, I really, you know, I should be more mindful of that. But uh, it's just uh, whatever year, this is 2015 or something, you get to see the screenshots of that era. And it's nice. It's interesting. It's kind of, you know, it's beautiful and cute. And whatever, just pass, let's go. The next thing is this uh, Lee guy. This is an interesting trauma-related, you know, psychology, state of the state and science there. Okay. It, it, like, this is, I'm sure there's an audience for that kind of stuff. Um, but alhamdulillah, it's good. Um, and then, oh, this, this channel, this TRT world is hilarious. So TRT world is, um, I guess, the Turkish media or something. So... So it's fascinating. You just get to hear all this like beautiful music. So it's like suspense music. When you watch this news, it's all suspense music, and um, and you get to you get to like it's very interesting. And you know it's like, it's you know whatever agenda you get to see the the PowerPoint. It's it's interesting. Uh, this is all the uh, Silicon Valley um, thinking and great stuff. As far as like I don't know like you know for my my psyche, whatever it is, seemed very good. And in fact, it seemed very good. It was like really good advice. So I was, I was, anyway, so inshallah, you know, anyway, it's just four minutes. If I, you know, end up in that whole world in whatever capacity, I might have to like deal with those kinds of frameworks. And so anyway, that's very interesting. 
Uh, the Art of Finding a Gold Miner. Frankly, I don't, oh, I remember why I did not watch this video. So this video, this video was um, just a little too cute. Like it was like basically Wired magazine and, and like, and you know, some accomplished guy chatting, but in this like really just the studio, the studio just looks whatever. So you just, you know, is interesting. It's interesting, cute, whatever. It's whatever, whatever. Okay, next. Uh, this is the real fun. Like this Al Ghazali is mind blowing, mind blowing stuff, mind blowing stuff. So this is the guy. This is the guy. Like I am just really like enjoying one of his um, one of his books right now. Let's just see. Maybe you know we'll go into my Google Drive. Let's see how controversial this is. God, I hope it's nothing embarrassing here. Please. Ah, phew. Who's this Avery? Oh, look, okay, that's that's all the it's it's kind of openish data. So I apologize if there are any. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Good, good, good. Okay, so this is fine. It's all like you know, civic civic Toronto, civic tech Toronto, something. So anyway, so there's this stuff. Okay, so let's just check out the Ghazali thing then. So this is called the Alchemy of Happiness. The A L C H. Yes, beautiful. Yes. This will be fun. This will be great. Okay, so Alhamdulillah. This stuff is amazing. So what's going on here is, oh, this is amazing. I can't believe I get to do videos about this. Maybe I'll be able to do this in the future, inshallah. Okay, so I'm reading about uh, uh, this. It's, it's, a, it's a translation. It's, um, it, it's an EPUB format. So, and it's open, meaning it's like, it's in the commons, this, 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 um, this, this thing, this, this book, this, this work. You know, it's like it's like it's it's like a treatise, like an on liberty kind of thing and whatnot. But this is from a scholar who is like well before these Renaissance guys, like well before. I don't even know which year. It's like it's a thousand something. You know? like it just it just seems very close to it's 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 classical scholarship. It's really good stuff. And this is like you know philosophy of mind and philosophy of like um, ethics, and it's just it's. It's solid stuff. It's like it's brilliant stuff. So this for me, it makes a lot. It's like I'm just like anyway. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah. So this is some sort of cool things that are happening in this in this field. This you know this like so what I've done is I've, I've highlighted in green what I kind of give it a thumbs up for myself. Like it's just it's an automatic thumbs up. And then these yellow ones are are more like I it's unclear. I need to like do a bit more research to check out the claim in some way. And then, so, but it's beautiful. It's like, I cannot tell you how beautiful it is. And then some, uh, yeah, I've probably got like a red, whatever, like it's, it's important. It's like, but, but the consistency that I'm trying to keep, like the green stuff is just like, it's a no brainer. It's like a thumbs up for me as of 2019, right? Cause like, as I grow, I'll be weirder, I guess. So, okay, so this is, so that's what this is happening. Okay, so let's just quickly just sample a few things from Al-Ghazali that I'm like totally like in, uh, Okay, Audhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. So what Ghazali is saying is you shouldn't also you no, thou shouldest ah, so you should. So you should also discover why you have been created with these two animal instincts. There's like this basic quality that we all have, and then there's this heavenly quality that we all have. Like we know we have. Like, you know, like so um uh and whether that they should subdue and lead thee captive, or whether thou, whether you'll be able to subdue those qualities in thy upward progress, your upward spiral or your upward trajectory, um, and make one thy steed and the other thy weapon. Oh my God, it's just like freaking amazing. Okay, so that's so cool. So it's just like you read it, you just get immersed in it. It's solid. It's really good. Um, and then um, this is the beauty. This translation, you know, so it's, it's a translated work from Arabic, right? So this is like whoever these scholars are. And I should cite them properly, inshallah. Hopefully, I'll make another video and, like, you know, we'll get into this in a more bite sized manner. So, this, uh, I think he's, yeah, he's, what he's talking about over here is like human beings are like, we're composed of this outward shape that we call the body. 
And he goes in a very nice, succinct description of this. Like this could be body as in whatever we know of the body today. Right? Like that could be the body. It's like that is the body. And then he calls this other inward entity the heart or the soul. So there's the physical heart that's pumping. For Ghazali, at least according to the translation, is like he's aware of the pumping heart, but he's saying, no, no, it's this internal consciousness. It's like your the fact that you're the you know in, in the in the in the philosophy of mind community, this is like the I guess the big problem or something, the big problem of consciousness or something. It's like it's the it's that it's that sad thing. So he's talking about consciousness, qualia and all that. Like, you know, how do you know red is red? And the green is green, blah, you know, that's that whole stuff. So he's talking about that, that inner thing as the heart. That is the soul, the soul, the heart, like the, the ghost inside the machine, right? like that thing. So that's the heart. And alhamdulillah, you know, the fact that the heart is pumping and putting, you know, a level of but like you know, oxygen, but the whole thing is happening right now. But this heart is pumping, whether you're asleep, awake, aware of it, not aware of it, it's just, it's going. So, something, alhamdulillah, it's, just, it's a beautiful thing as a seat of intelligence. Um, and then he's got this beautiful description later on of like, ah, this one, look at this, look at this quote here. He says, so he's seeing the body maybe figured as a kingdom. And in the Quran, there's like a, a verse in the Quran, and like, God, I love you, and I miss you, I'm sorry. But like, God says in the, in the Quran somewhere that Abraham refers to, I think himself, as a community. I, I promise you this is there uh, in a translation. You know what? Let's look at it right now. You know, that's the responsible thing to do. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. As much as I don't want to do this, I'm going to talk about Ghazali, but alhamdulillah, let's get to the, after the Quran. This is the important stuff. Okay, so Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, I need to go with the translation. This is that. Okay, perfect. So this translation is the one that I prefer at the moment for quick and quick access to what I need, and then I can then I can check out all the other translations, and then and then I have like a physical copy of um, an earlier version of this online copy. Uh, let me sorry, let me just actually share this with you so that you see what I'm doing. Okay. So so this this is the uh, the free minds version, but they, but they go by the monotheist group and like you know they got like um, they're interesting and they're and you know they're it's, it's an active community, it's an active community. So that's like really cool. You get all flavors there too, but like you know it's like a stack exchange of sorts, but like it's it's got like a similar kind of doesn't have the swanky tech like stack exchange, but it's the quality I find is is reasonably good. Like it's really good. Um, so, so alhamdulillah. So anyway, so this is so this is this is my like starting point for some of the research questions, uh, and then I can get into the Quran and like you know check it out a little bit more carefully. So what I'm uh, uh, trying to research here is Abraham refers to himself as a community. So I'm going to type the word community, and then I'll show you how this uh, works. Mm, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's not here <sighs> unless it was that. No. Community. Uh, this is Abraham, and he refers to. Is this to do with the Salat? I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, no, that's not gonna work. Slide. And I'll say Abraham body. Oh goodness, I don't think this will work. This is the you know there is there is not you know okay inshallah I will find that reference and I will like I will I will I will post it. Yeah, so anyway, anyway, so the thing is like, I think we know, I think it's, it, and, and, and how I came across that issue was like, it was just the language in the Arabic that was used where 
Abraham refers to his creed or something, something to that effect in the plural, but it was only him or something to that effect. So anyway, you know, the, it's just lots of depth to the, the, the nuances, but if you say like, so I'm gonna to have to get to a higher level now and not get into the real detail. So, so anyway, Al Ghazali is referring to his body as that as a kingdom, and then the soul as the king. So this internal consciousness, heart, thing, mind, the soul, like that internal world, basically, that the un, you know, undenying, like the, the internal world that we all have. It's what he's talking about, as like you know, as and that is the king, and the different senses and faculties, and you know. Uh, is the army so it's like you basically you're composed of that kind of quality you've got you've got a, a thing that can drive act like a king sort of so to speak something within you or like you know in that in that regal capacity and then you've got and then you've got like other faculties other things that you can use like you've got emotions you get angry sometimes and so on and so forth so he says, reason may be called the vizier, like the advisor or the prime minister, passion as the revenue collector, and anger as the police officer. And under the guise of revenue, passion is continually prone to plunder on its own account, while resentment is always inclined to harshness and, ex and extreme severity. Both of these, the revenue collector and the police officer, have to be kept in due subordination to the king. So the soul, and that's where, you know, I just made it like, so, so the soul is the ghost. You know, that's, I guess that's when I came to this understanding. But now I'm getting a little bit more into this and it's like, oh boy, like, you know, I need to be aware of my passions and that's the desires, whatever. Like, you know, it's just, there's a lot going on. It's fascinating, fascinating. And look at this. The aim of moral discipline is to purify this internal being, is to purify the heart, is to purify yourself. So that's the aim of moral discipline. Ah, I see. So I think he talks about like, yeah, there's like the, the, some mirror talk and that's what I'm a little bit, you know, I just want to stay really close, you know, this, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, this is awesome. So he says, but, so what uh, Ghazali's like um, eventual thing is like, is a, is a, is a life of, is the life of an ascetic, I think. I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly, but it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a frugal and frugal way of living on earth and so on and so forth. Now, this is duly beautiful. I mean, it's kind of in that minimalism camp, so to speak. So it's like that, um, uh, except it's like if you, you're, you're like into God, like in a major way. You're like into God in a major way and then minimalism, like, right? Like, so that's the kind of, maybe like, it's just how I'm articulating it now. But like I was thinking about it, but anyways, that's how I could probably say what he's talking about. So he's saying that's what. So that's the like it's and apparently there's a Sufi streak and all sorts of stuff. Okay, but if his lower tendencies have triumphed after death, he will ever be looking looking towards the earth and longing for earthly delights. Um, so there's there's something. And, and, and therefore he's, and so that, and therefore, like, you know, I understand the benefits of letting go, right? So, uh, and then in, in other passages, he talks about like this, and really it starts to rip, red mark in yellow, which is like, which is the thing that he's saying, angels contemplate the beauty of God and are entirely free from these animal qualities. So they don't have these base qualities. They're just pure in that, in that respect. And if you are of an, an angelic nature, then strive towards that origin. <laughs> it's what he says, like pursue that, pursue your destiny, like of, of that sort. But like, I put it in yellow because like, like I don't know how he's arrived at, that's what the angels do, but like I can, yeah, I, that makes sense to me. Uh, you know, this also makes sense to me, free from analog, but, but this is it. You know, if thou art of angelic nature, that is the one that is a bit freaky for me because 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 we're not angels, so so we should not so so I don't know what that means exactly. You know and and the, you know so this like it's anyway it's fascinating it's just just hundred percent beautiful fascinating. So this is Al Ghazali. This is like really good stuff. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, okay, so now let's just get back into like a little bit more of this um, YouTube stuff. 
So anyway, so Al-Ghazali is, is something that I'm like, I'm really like appreciating or whatever form. And this is just on the surface, like, you know, this YouTube stuff, and like, so Chrome and whatever else. You know, what is this? Stacking something. It was all just like tips and tricks and managing life, I think. Uh, this one, oh, you know why I clicked on this, this video? This video was like, it's the Google machine learning that's throwing me stuff at me and sometimes it feels random and sometimes it doesn't and whatever else and so sometimes it's like it's clickbait essentially it's clickbait and so i click it so i click it every now and then and just to just to see what happens and i've only recently started doing this i've normally stayed clear from all the clickbait nowadays i'm just clicking it and seeing what happens uh it's a bit scary i'll say it is really scary stuff um and no, but, but that's the thing too. Like earlier, I used to keep my YouTube and my Google search histories and all that very meticulously uh, segregated, right? Like I have my work profile, I have my, my like, you know, I had done that, done a very uh, thorough job of it over the years. And in 2019, I'm doing this, running this really crazy internet experiment on myself. I mean, the World Wide Web, you know, internet web, so web, web experiment where I'm actually like um, mixing the, the algorithms. So I'm like, I'm actually giving it the flavor of different perspectives. And that is just really, that is, that is scary stuff. I will say quite honestly. And that's the reason like going back into this Islam, like, you know, getting back into the Quran for me is actually like a safer spot. Um, yeah, believe it or not. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, because you know this is this is you know this guy this Troy Hunt is amazing. So this is like from my um, my like tech work. So so it's 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 been really amazing because I've been so it's, it's, he's he's really good. Basically, he's he's solid, and I really get like uh, and he demonstrates some of the real tech vulnerabilities that we have today, and it's kind of amazing. Like it's just really amazing. So that's good stuff too. He's a like, you know, I don't follow these guys on on Twitter and stuff as like the primary feed because, you know, it's just impossible. It's impossible. So, so I just put them in a different list and, you know, it's like someday I might check that list. But like their bookmark, it's curated. Like I've got a curated list of these types here and there, you know. That's another day, another topic. Um, this Greta girl I've just been following lately because the left-wing community that I, I guess, have my work experience with is um, very much into this environmental stuff. And of course, you know, why not? Like everybody, why sure, like I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. But like, I live in Toronto. And Toronto is like basically an island. It's not an island, whatever, but like, but just conceptually, it's, an, it's, it's, it's a concrete island, uh, really in, in one of the harshest climates. Like so, so in other words, like Toronto would not exist if, you know, like it, it ought not to in, in like technically, it's, it's really like a funny box. It's a really funny box because I was, in my former work, I flew from Chicago to, um, Chicago to Toronto and like in Chicago, I see the Trump Tower, like, you know, like the Trump Tower is huge and it's huge and Chicago looks very, very much like um, Toronto. And then, uh, and as we were flying into Toronto, like I was flying back into Toronto, I'm like, why the hell are people wanting to live here? Like, you know, it's such a weird thing for people to be paying these kinds of house prices for to live in, a, in, a, in, in this place, whereas they can actually live in other places in the world for so much cheaper, better, whatever. So, um, and so it's fascinating that the house prices are where, where they are, and et cetera, et cetera. So, so anyway, so, so going back to like this, this Greta girl, like there's no chance in, I mean, to me, like there's no chance that anything is gonna change to, to make the world a better place for her. Like the way she speaks and stuff. It, it's just impossible. Like you're not gonna get to that point. <laughs> like I'm not to sound pessimistic or anything. It's just, it's just the obvious reality. Like, you know, everything that we have is manufactured in China. Like nobody knows how to put together a lens or a webcam other than a select audience, right? Like the rest are basically, you just have to pay for it and buy it and that's it. And 
people don't realize what goes into this. Like I certainly don't. It's like so. So this, like, I mean, all of that requires oil. Like, this, you know, the plastic, these webcams, all these cameras that are full. Like, it's like, where the hell does that come from? It comes from the oil. <laughs> so, and like, oh, it's just bizarre to be just like so. What? So lately, where I'm, the reason I'm following this girl is like, I watched the TED talk and it was interesting. It, it was good and sure and very moving, but like. I'm seeing her emotion right now, and I have a three-year-old girl, so I'm like, you know, I'm paying attention to these things a little bit more in a different perspective. And so this young girl here is actually very, like, stressed, like, in, in, in a very serious way. At least that's how it comes across. And I don't think it's necessarily responsible to be doing this to her, you know? It's like, that's a common sense thing, I would think. Like how on earth are we going to actually repair the, the fisheries that have collapsed? I, like I've seen a bunch of like videos about like the state of the oceans and like, I don't know, whatever filter bubble that I was in, like I, I, you know, we, we kind of know the horror stories, but then you have people who believe that the earth is flat and stuff. And, uh, it's, and, and I know for a fact that it's huge. I mean, like from my little tiny experience on this planet, so anyway, so like, you know, it's this, this, this whole thing is just weird in some ways. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, like be good to the environment. Why not? Sure. You know, why not? Let's do that. Fine. So, okay. So then there's like all these little news stories. Uh, and I'm uh, sourcing this from Al Jazeera. And I also watch CBC every now and then. <laughs> this Kimmel guy is, is, is really, really funny. There, look at this girl again. Anyway, so, so that, there's lots of stuff happening. There's a little bit more Ghazali stuff happening, uh, and so on and so on and so on. And this was where I came across this. Um, anyway, this 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 Turkish uh, news channel is is super new. It's super new. I just literally just you know I've just subscribed to the feed, and it's um it's 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 a totally different world. So anyway, anyway, you know there's just basically a lot going on, and. Um, that's the that's the that's the update. I really do want to talk more about this Quran alone stuff. This Quran alone stuff is um, fascinating. So maybe I'll make shorter videos and just stick to the topic, and then you'll get a sense of what's what's happening. <sighs> Peace.